Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. God is good. And all the time. Say like you mean it. God is good. And all the time. Despite all the evil in the world, God is still good. All the time is ever good. The Bible says he tempts no man with evil. And will do evil to no man. Never. Not even once. Psalm 139, he says his thoughts towards us as such that if we count all the sand on the seashore, cannot measure his thoughts. And he told us one of them in Jeremiah 29, 11. He said, my thoughts towards you are of good, not of evil, of peace. To bring you to an expected end. That's one out of the multitude on the seashore. He gave us insight to one, two, or three. He says, the Lord is mindful of us, Psalm 115. He says, he will bless us. He will bless the house of Aaron. That's another thought. The thoughts are endless. But not one is evil. Say the Lord shall increase you more and more. That's another thought he has towards us. In Psalm 8, he says, the angel asks the Lord, what is man that you are so mindful of him that you visit? Another thought is, I just want to visit you. I just want to be with you. I just want to come. He said, for I knock. If you will open, I will come in and watch soft in your house. That's another thought he's having towards you. I want to come and sup with you. I want to enter your house and dine with you. That's three. He has like a trillion. <laughs> and not one is evil. Wow. Imagine those thoughts came to pass. He explained another one. He said, the thoughts I have towards you, eye has not seen. Ear has not heard. Neither has he entered into the heart of men. The things are prepared for you. Now look at all those thoughts. Do you know that we are the ones that think evil of ourselves? We think evil. He has never thought evil once. It's good. God is good. And all the time, God is good. Amen. I just said that to buttress that God is good. Amen. You can always find scriptures to prove and to align with the fact that God is good. We know the days are evil. Very, very evil. We're in gross darkness on the earth. In Isaiah 60, he says, you shouldn't be alarmed with gross darkness. Because when you see not just darkness, but gross darkness, you should know that it's time for you to arise and the glory of God to be seen in your life. Luke 21, he said, you shall see wars, rumors of wars, Earthquakes in diverse places, pestilences, coronavirus, a pestilence. A pestilence, they are all from the kingdom of darkness. Psalm 91 buttresses that. The spirit, say the arrow that fly by day, the pestilence that walketh, it walking. It's an entity, it is walking, seeking whom it may devour. It's a spirit. We bind that spirit in China today in 48 hours. It will be brought. No, I didn't say. I didn't say I'm binding. I say if I bind it now, in 48 hours, it will be brought under control. But I have no reason to do that. Believers come together and say we'll stop it. No, it will stop. The scientists will find the solution. The solution is always with God. And we said. One of the things to look up means 
Because he said, you shall see pestilences, darkness, evil, encroaching. So when these things begin to come to pass, raise your head up and look up. Meaning, the solution to be immune from it is to look up. Now the question is, what does it mean to look up? And we said one of it is when he addressed Habakkuk and said, Habakkuk went to God and said, there is crisis in the land. Nothing is working. The Chaldeans are now coming. It's getting worse by the day. And God told Habakkuk, the evil has not started. <laughs> it's just about to start. And let me tell people, you've been hearing of evil. Let me be honest with you. It has not started. We have not seen anything. Anything. In fact, it has not even woken up. It's just about to wake up. <laughs> so when we say evil is coming, what has happened is a child's play compared to what is coming. The G of Redeem said, if we sum all the evils that we have seen, say nothing will match what will happen in 2020. Say we have not seen evil like it in years have we have been. God told me, say there is no evil that can match any evil you have seen ever since you were born that will happen in 2020. Say you can't, say no evil can match it. Say if you combine the day you were born till 2019, it will not match the combination of 2020. So it has not started. But that's nothing to worry about because he said, when you see this evil, there's a way out for you. He said, you raise your head and look up. Why? Your redemption, your breakthrough has come. I told you, the last vision I saw, the Lord was telling me, you're not ready for what I'm bringing. God is not bringing evil. God is bringing solutions. God is bringing breakthroughs. All those visions, those messages you have been having, that's been encouraging you, God wants to bring them to pass. That's what is coming. In the midst of all the evil, he is admonishing you, be ready. Because I want to bring that glory into your life. So it's nothing to be worried about. And we examine what it means to look up. And they told Habakkuk, this is the way you will look up when you see the evil coming. So the word I gave you, write it on a tablet. The vision you are expecting, if you are expecting evil, write it on the tablet. But if you are expecting glory, write it so plain that on top speed you can read the whole vision. That's how big it is. Amen. Guess it's better. So, um, they told Habakkuk, it's not to go on the mountain and fast and pray. That's not what we sent you. That's not how to look up. It's not to do fasting for 200 days. We didn't send you. It's not 100 days. So. God didn't put that yoke on you. Man did. When Esther fasted, there was a reason for it. He said, fast for me for three days. I'll go and meet the king and seek audience for deliverance for Israel. Your own is routine. That's not what it means to look up. If you fast 200 days, if you get caught up in the crossfire, you may not be saved though. Looking up is not fasting. And it's time the church understands looking up is not what fasting. So it's not going to save you through fasting. He even said your fasting is wearying him. In Isaiah 58, he said he's tired of your fasting. You are working in unforgiveness, you are fasting. You are living in sin, you are fasting. You are doing all sorts, you are fasting. I ask you to do this, you don't obey, but you are fasting. He said your fast is wearing me out. I don't know the difference between that and the other religion. They all seem the same, you know. <laughs> Amen. Praise Jesus. But I guess if you don't know the way out, you have to prescribe something. You can't go to a doctor and he'll leave you without a prescription. Even if it's paracetamol, he'll give you for cancer. Say, so take this 12 times daily. Ah. Must prescribe something. Can't leave him like that and go, no. Unfortunately, it may not solve the problem. And you that has been doing it for seven years, to be able to once in a while look back and say, we are not moving forward. And so Abacock's way of looking up is to put his eyes on the vision, on the word, 
on the message on the harvest that is coming. And also means not to discuss or consider the darkness. No, not to discuss, sorry. Not to consider the darkness. I told you Joseph in prison knew he was coming close to redemption. And the baker and the butler both had a dream. It's Pharaoh that will set you free, and one is going to meet Pharaoh. So you should be free in a few days' time. And he told the butler, please, when you get to Pharaoh, tell him that I was wrongly incarcerated. Anybody that lodges a complaint, God says, will be caught up in the darkness. It's not a year that a word of complaint must come out of your mouth. I tire. It will not work. Say, tell Pharaoh that was stolen from my father's house. They should help me. They forgot it for two years. When they told him you are meeting Pharaoh, he did not talk about his father's house before Pharaoh. That's a man looking up. He did not discuss his kidnap with Pharaoh. God said, if you are still talking of rape of 13 years or 15 years, say you are stuck, you are not moving anywhere again. That's why God told the church, move forward. Moving forward is looking up. Amen? Another way God will solve, save, and is very unorthodox, but everybody loves peace, is that he will put his peace upon you. And that peace will be a hedge around you. And it will immune you from the darkness. So when I say peace be upon you, don't say and also be with you. Don't say that. I am the peace. I give it to you as I've received of the Lord. So if I say be if I say peace be upon you, don't say and also with you. No. You say amen. You receive it. It's a spirit. It's a kingdom. Nebuchadnezzar, you are a kingdom that is strong. Only a greater kingdom can remove you. I saw a stone not carved with hands. It's called the kingdom of God. It smashed you to pieces. This darkness is a kingdom. It can only be subdued by another kingdom. Romans 14, 17. And the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. When that peace rests on you, if you walk into Boko Haram territory, you will walk out a life unscratched. Nothing will touch you. Amen. Amen. Peace be upon you. Amen. Peace in your home. Amen. Peace in your business. Amen. Peace in your health. Amen. Peace in your career. Amen. Peace in your job. Amen. Peace in your finances. Amen. I pronounce peace in your going out. Amen. Peace in your coming in. Peace in all that concerns you. In the name of Jesus. Jesus was talking to Jerusalem. He said, oh Jerusalem, if only you know what is given for your peace. He said, you would have received it. There are carriers of peace. There is the peace of God. When it sits on you, listen to me. You can go through Abuja Kaduna Road. If you have that peace, go. nothing will happen. If kidnappers come out, they will pass you. You know, I told you one day. I was talking to some young men. I said, fear nothing. It is written in the word. Don't fear armed robbers. I think it was a surge of armed robbers everywhere. Just like you have kidnapping. And I charge you again, don't fear kidnappers. Don't fear. Just like I can't pray to enter the kidnappers den. So I can deal a blow and a lesson. Because I'll tell them what I will eat. And they must get it. I said, I want bacon. You must find it. Too. <laughs> Otherwise, they'll be they will just start dropping dead. They say, look, you will leave. Just give me sausage. Give, I like this kind of tea. <laughs> it must be hot. Cross my leg. Do you have DSTV? I want to watch. <laughs> How long are you keeping me here for? There's no money. It's for you to be saved. <laughs> what if they cannot? Your life is not in their hands. It's hidden in Christ Jesus. You cannot take it. You cannot take it. You say, you cannot hurt. You cannot. 
Hot not the flour, hot not the oil. You cannot. If that piece is written, you cannot. It cannot happen. It will not. It cannot happen in Jesus. If you're a plane, if it crashes, you will come out unscratched. Not a scratch on your body. Anywhere you will come out. It cannot hurt you. And it's one of the greatest protection against the darkness. It's called peace. Shalom. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. I'll finish the story. And I said, you were driving, you heard arm robbers, and you fled into the forest. I said, Pastor, okay. Say they had gone. I said, so they heard what? I said, I said, fear not. Ah, they asked me, have you met robbers before? I said, no. He said, that's why you are talking like that. Then I knew I had no message for them. So immediately on the podium, like in a church like this, I said, oh, God, Father of our Lord Jesus. You know, when you pray to God, you make requests. Request like, bless me with a car, bless me with a house, bless me with a job. I said, oh God, bless me. Bring me before I'm robbers. That's a prayer I prayed. That these people may know that this peace is greater than AK-47. The bullets will fall on the ground. It won't even touch. If it touches your body, it will bounce like metal. Cow to bounce off. Jesus. Boko Haram is trash. I sent somebody once to do an assignment in my Dugur in Boko Haram territory, a lady, she lost her phone on that day because of panic. Then the president visited my Duguri then, and there was a bomb. There were two bomb explosions. The president and commander-in-chief was evacuated because of the attack. Not the current president. He was evacuated. She went into and carried out the assignment. It was a prayer and a prophetic prayer. And passed through Boko Haram checkpoint. <laughs> And came out. I said, go in this peace. You will go and return. <laughs> it's stronger than 180,000 soldiers armed to the teeth. It's more guaranteed than the entire military strength of the United States, China, Russia, France, England, and Germany put together. I didn't mention Nigeria. But that one is not hate speech, have you? <laughs> Praise Jesus. <clears throat> when I met the armed robbers, I've never seen robbers. You know, I used to watch, they say, Commando movie. When they put Rambo, I thought it was only a film. It's real life. They had all those things. You saw muscle. The bullets were on their bodies like this. Not in magazine, no. It was submachine gun. They held it. They blocked the road. My friend is a pastor in Christ Embassy now. His name is Jude. He was beside me. I said, Jude, are you afraid? He said, no. I said, advance. No, he was beside me. And as I tell him, get down. Because I'm going towards the robbers. People are fleeing. No. I, I want to tell him to get down. He said, I asked him, are you? He's a pastor in Christ Embassy today. His name is Jude. I said, are you afraid? He said, no. So you're ready? He said, I said, that's good. I drove towards the robbers. They stopped. I said, excuse me. Move out of the road. I want to pass. They said, yes, sir. They moved down the road. I drove past. There was a V-boot in the, my mirror coming. He thought that the children of Israel walked on dry sea by scientific, um, scientific and water gravity, irrigation, and communication. So he followed me. They didn't stop him. They unleashed bullets. That man can't survive it. And that's how we passed through. And I said, I've met the robbers. And I passed through. Will you believe? They said, yes, sir. And I understand why they said Jesus was a faithful high priest for he was tempted in all points as we are. It's the peace that crippled the robbers with all the guns in their hand. When it's on your head, you are safe. Let the darkness multiply times a billion. You are immune from it. You will walk. You will prosper. You will flourish. You will excel. While others are casting down, you will be saying there's a lifting up. 
in the name of Jesus. It's called peace. It's not everybody that has it. We pay to collect it from the Lord. And I paid all the requirements and I collected it from the Lord Jesus. It's the most crucial commodity in the world today. And of course, the most scarce commodity under heaven today. When I received the peace, I was in then my house and I was lying down and the heavens opened and an angel appeared in heaven, white, massive, and called my name three times and says, glory be to God in the highest. Peace and goodwill be upon you. That was how I received the peace. So I'm a giver of peace and I'm a retractor of peace. I can seize peace over a territory and I can release the peace of God over a territory. I can bless you with peace in the name of Jesus. And I bless you this day with peace. In Jesus, for many that are troubled, be at peace. In your soul, be at peace. If I bless you with peace in your body, it will work healing and health in your mortal body in the mighty name of Jesus. Peace means prosperity. It means rest. It means harmony. It means calm. It means absence of strife or evil. It means safety. It means favor. It means health. It means whole. It means tranquility. It means welfare. It means no agitation. It means immunity. There is a peace of the world. You saw what's happening in Syria. They sign peace accord. They are breaking it every day. They will sign accord. You move here. It is the safe zone. There's no peace in the world. He said, my peace I give you not as the world gives. The world's peace is unreliable. It cannot save. It's dependent on the barrel of the gun. It's dependent on people. But well, the peace of God is dependent on the heavenly kingdom. Mashal by mighty warring angels. Amen? Amen? Solomon, God told him in 1 Kings chapter 5 verse 4. And God said, I've given you rest all around you. That rest is peace. So that there is no evil or rebellion. Or evil or current. In Job, when Job's family was intact and God was having a conversation in Job 1.10 with Satan, Satan said, you have hedged him around. He is untouchable. That hedge is peace. Then Job breached the peace. There's a consecration for the peace. Job breached it. Then the next thing we had, his children died. All the people you see, the calamities happening. Peace has been breached. When peace is intact, it's a hedge. Nothing can happen to you. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. That hedge that protected Job was peace. Solomon had it. Nobody fought him. Nobody rebelled against his reign. They rebelled against his son, not against him. The Bible never said God gave his son rest. God gave him rest. God gave him peace. So there is no peace in the world. It's only in the millennium when Jesus returns that there will be peace. But that peace he will give when he returns in the millennium, he has given to some people. And they can give it on condition. They can retract it on condition. It's a spirit. That's why I said, if you enter a house, salute it. Let your peace come upon it. If there be someone worthy, let your peace abide. If there be no one worthy, let your peace return. One day I blessed a man. I said, go in peace. The Lord appeared to me. He said, no. Nope. Retract your peace from him. And I said, my peace I gave. I called him. My peace I gave to you. I retracted back. And I felt like an air-conditioned wave returned to me. Like a cold air. It was that spirit. It returned. 
He said, it's not worthy of that peace. Amen. Amen. From today, I'm going to ask that peace to follow you all around. Amen. Envelope you around. Amen. Envelope your business. Amen. Envelope your family. Amen. Dig a hedge around you. In the name of Jesus. Luke 19, 41 to 42. When you have this peace. There is peace with God. When you get born again, every human being who has not accepted Jesus as the only begotten Son of God is an enemy of God. The Bible says he stands condemned before the Almighty. It's not the stealing. It's not the lies. It's the rejection of Jesus as the only begotten. But the Bible says we are all enemies of God. When you accept Jesus, Jesus brings us into a reconciliation with God by which we're no more enemies with God. And then we now have what we call peace with God. That means between God and us, there is no quarrel again. But that doesn't mean you have the peace of God. You only have peace with God. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up and I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.